Hi everyone. Look at all this peace and quiet and sunshine. I have the best comic book review spot. And then now it's time to talk about a dark and scary gothic horror book. So this is Bison Gas number two. I uh, messed up the creator's gender last time. I think I saw Marty and I thought Guy. But uh, M. Alice Legro is, uh, is a lady. And uh, I was a little critical of volume one. I didn't like the manga, the, the kind of like fake American manga vibe of it. But I really praised the uh, front piece illustrations, which I thought were very detailed, very rich very soaked in kind of a gothic tradition and this is one of the weirdest books I'd recommend and all I can really say about volume two is if you liked what you saw in my review of volume one you'll like volume two if you just can't get past some of the weird art I don't know if what I say about volume two is gonna persuade you but maybe what I will say is I like naive art uh, that's the other people have used the term bad art for it I I, I like the term naive art or self-taught art because it communicates that it's not fitting with like the traditions of representationalism or you know lyrical uh, three-dimensional drawing of form and everything but it can have a charm which is not just condescending but it's a real charm and in the case of bison gas it actually kind of fits nicely because bison gas has this overall really weird cool creepy gothic horror vibe to it where the characters looking a little off-putting fits fits with the off-puttingness of the narrative like i don't know if i'd want to read a shonen jump kind of style action story in this style but a creepy you know girl trying to save her soul from evil monsters thing it, it works and then uh the, the girl also does some like really bold stuff like this little uh demon cat thing Edan Edanielle uh is drawn as like a little doodle person and then there will like I mentioned there'll be these front frontis pieces with like really ornate you know art deco art nouveau details and Victorian costuming and she's a cosplayer so a big part of her appreciation of manga is her like knowledge of cosplay her knowledge of costumery and she plays to her strengths uh, the, the other neat thing about it is kind of like the variations of a theme thing. Man, the sun's so bright, you can see the texture on the page. It's so intense. But uh, like every chapter, uh, Dinah, who's kind of um, insane, or the, the doctors are talking about institutionalizing her, uh, is having to sort through her demons, essentially, and uh, pay off a contract. Their contract with this evil like spider jester thing is she has to kind of get these souls of troubled people. Yeah, she has to help them solve their problems so they can move on to the next world. And she has to clear out like several rooms worth of these. And uh, something that changed at the end of volume one is they introduced E. Danielle. And he adds like just the right, you know, weird sense of humor that I think volume one needed. So it's actually got, I've actually started to enjoy it more. Like he's kind of reverent, he's weird, he's 21st century and he's like a spiritual guide and vaguely creepy. <laughs> Uh, and he, he, it just adds to the overall weirdness. Nothing quite makes sense. Like, she, her family died in a Honda Civic accident, so that tells me, okay, it seems to be like modern times, like 1970s maybe, but then she wears like a flapper outfit, so 1920s, but then there'll be all this Victorian details, so maybe 1800s. It's, uh, it's steampunk is what it is. It's combining different little elements of different time periods together because it looks cool, not necessarily.